Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning to everyone. Just have some administrative matters first. I wanted to introduce into the record page 50, 55 from the committee's interview with FBI employee Roya Demlo, who you just spoke about, which took place on July 17, 2023. Uh, in that line, she says, uh, the question was asked, okay, if someone were to leave here today, were to leave this interview and were to suggest or imply that when you said the laptop was real, that it meant that the FBI had affirmatively determined in October 2020 that the laptop belonged to Hunter Biden, that the contents belonged to Hunter Biden, and that the contents had not been manipulated in some way, would they be representing what you said, correct? Answer by Ms. Demlo. They would be representing what I said because I don't have much knowledge of that. They would be misrepresenting what I said because I don't have much knowledge of that. Uh, because this committee likes to misrepresent or leave off complete sentences of what individuals said, I'd like to introduce this into the record. Objection. One of the penalties of refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors. That quote is attributed to the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, and I thought that was a appropriate way to begin this short video. This is a clip that's gone somewhat viral on the internet the past few days from a recent House committee hearing on weaponization of federal government. Now think about what we're talking about here, the weaponization of federal government. That means the, the federal go government is overreaching themselves and stepping on the rights of human beings, of, of citizens of the United States. We're not just talking about Democrats, and we're not just talking about Republicans, we're talking about people in general. The speech that they're saying is the, the federal government's going out there and saying, no, you can't say this, no, you can't say that. So this has become a problem. That's the purpose of the hearing. I think everyone can get behind that, right? Well, not Stacey Plaskett. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning to everyone. I have some administrative matters first. I wanted to introduce him to the record, page 50, 55. Okay, so she flubbed the page number. Did you hear that? She said 50 flat, 55. May sound like I'm being nitpicky, but that is going to come up again. The committee's interview with FBI employee Roria Demlo. Roria Demlo. Roria Demlo. Roria Demlo. Roria Demlo. Roria Demlo. Who's Roria Demlo? Let's get a little background here, okay? Here's an article from Yahoo News. Look at this headline. FBI official testifies agency knew Hunter Biden laptop was real. And that person's name, that FBI official, is Laura Demlo. She just said Rory Demlo. Like, she can't read the word Laura. You know, Stacey Plaskett, she's been in law for years. The, the letter of the law, you know. She, she can't get the letters right on the word Laura. Page number. Section Chief of the FBI's Foreign Influence Task Force, Laura Demlo, participated in a transcribed interview before the House Judiciary Committee and its subcommittee on the weaponization of the federal government on Monday and revealed details of how the Bureau conditioned social media companies to believe the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation despite knowing it was legitimate. So did you catch that? The FBI knew that the Hunter Biden laptop, which Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, had originally exposed to the public, uh, someone they're trying to disbar right now, by the way, and maybe you can see why. Uh, turns out they were, you know, the, the FBI was instructing social media, Twitter, Facebook, etc., to censor people that were telling the truth about the laptop. And people who were calling it Rush, Russian disinformation were the only ones allowed to speak about it. Turns out it wasn't Russian disinformation. So. Stacy Plaskett is trying to reinterpret what Laura Demlo said, and that's what she's entering into the record right now. She's trying to she's trying to defend the federal government on this issue. You know, what is the establishment? I mean, if it isn't the federal government, and she's up there defending that. I mean, does that even make her a Democrat? Is she really standing up for people? No, she's the voice of the establishment. If that's what she's doing, you just spoke about which took place on July 17, 2023. Uh, in that line, she says, uh, the question was asked, okay, if someone... All right, now pay attention to this woman's mouth. 
She's mouthing along because she has committed to memory everything that Stacy Plaskett is reading. And she looks nervous, doesn't she? She's kind of flipping out, almost like she's hypnotized under some kind of weird trance. But she's obviously clinging to every word that Stacy Plaskett is reading and noting every little error. To leave here today, we're to leave this interview and we're to suggest or imply that when he said the laptop was real, that it meant that the FBI had affirmatively determined in October 2020 that the... Okay, what's she doing now? Look, you see how she covered her mouth? It's because she's in such a trance thinking about those words and mouthing them. She suddenly realized, oh no, I, my mouth is moving. I'm, I'm mouthing the words that she's saying. That's not going to look good. So she covers her mouth and tries to do these like what she thinks are natural motions to, to uh, who is this woman? Like what kind of person lacks that kind of self-awareness? You know, when I talk about mind control and, you know, how there's, there's gotta be this think tank somewhere that's just churning these people out, just brainwashing them and churning them out and releasing them in, in important positions in society. I mean, these are the, the weirdos that are, are running things. The FBI had affirmatively determined in October, 2020, that the laptop belonged to Hunter Biden, that the contents belonged to Hunter Biden, and that the contents had not been manipulated in some way, would they be representing what you said, correct? Answer by Ms. Demlo. They would be representing what I said because I don't have much knowledge of that. They would be misrepresenting what I said because I... Okay, did you see what happened there? This woman knows the words that are coming out of her mouth so well she knows them better than Stacy Plaskett. Stacy Plaskett is just reading it. She doesn't seem to even know what she's reading. She did, because if she if she understood the words that she was reading, she would have caught her own mistake. You know, this woman caught it um, immediately. She said represented when she should have said misrepresented. And she leaned over and whispered to her and then Stacy Plaskett just corrected herself, still not even really, you know, where's the emotion here? I mean, She's putting emotion into it in the sense that, like, she's trying to project this, you know, self-righteous kind of attitude. But when you get below the surface, she, she doesn't even know the words she's reading. And this woman has been in law for many years, representing the Virgin Islands. And in fact, she took uh, contributions, you know, financial contributions from Jeffrey Epstein, the convicted pedophile, child trafficker. She took money from him. You know, she represents the Virgin Islands where Epstein Island was, Pedo Island. So, you know, it's not a question of whether she's beautiful or, or whatever, you know, what race she is, what political affiliation. It's not a question of that. It's a question of her character. She's a sketchy ass person. She shouldn't be up there representing us. I mean, she's probably put all kinds of people behind bars and who knows what else kind of damage she's done. You know, this person should not be up there have much knowledge of that uh, because this committee likes to misrepresent. Okay, did you see this woman? She just shook her head and nodded. You know why? She's like, damn it, Stacy, you blew it. You know, because her the whole purpose of submitting page 55 of the transcript was to try and use words to reinterpret what Laura Denlo was saying. You see? And she completely blew it. So this other guy, Goldman, is going to try and fix it up. Watch this. Mr. Gentleman, gentleman yields back to Chairman. I have a unanimous consent motion before we have to You see from the gentleman from New York. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, page two of the trend. Okay, that voice you hear is from Goldman, and he just said he wants to introduce from page two of the transcript. Now remember, Stacy Plaskett said page 50, blah, I mean page 55, okay? Now Goldman is saying page two. And he's about to recite exactly what she just recited, attempted to recite already. But he's going to try and do it more eloquently. Script of Laura Demlo, where... Laura Demlo, did you hear that? He said the name right. She said Rory or something like that. Uh, specifically, she says, uh, if someone, uh, she's asked, if someone were to leave here today were to leave at this interview and were to suggest or imply or state that when you said, quote, the laptop was real, unquote, that it meant that the FBI had affirmatively determined in October 2020 that the laptop belonged to Hunter Biden, that the contents belonged to Hunter Biden, 
that the contents had not been manipulated in some way, they would be misrepresenting what you said, correct? Answer, they would be misrepresenting what I said. Because you hear that? So they're re-entering what Stacy Plaskett already entered in. But see, the point isn't to enter it into the record because all they're doing is trying to reinterpret what has already been established, which is that the FBI agent said that they knew that the laptop was not Russian disinformation and told the public that it was. They lied. So they're trying to reinterpret it and they need this sound bite. They need this they need these lines delivered smoothly and they wanted them delivered by Stacy Plaskett because I don't know because she's a beautiful strong looking black woman that that's you know because see they want to make it all about race and politics okay but she flubbed it so badly he had to do it again and you can hear Jim Jordan's going yeah yeah okay you already entered that in okay so it's all about optics it's all about that sound bite getting someone saying this and then shoving it out there and hoping that they're too ignorant to look into it and realize that it's BS, that, you know, it doesn't delegitimize anything that has already been established. It's purely for optics. Don't have much knowledge of that. Without objection, I think that's already been introduced, but without objection, we'll do it again. We're sorry, it's stand page in recess. We stand in recess. Did you hear that? He said, sorry, it's page 55. So she got the page number wrong, but then corrected herself. And then he just flat out said the wrong page completely, page two, and then corrected himself way at the end. So, you know, these people deep down, they must know how corrupt they are. And, you know, they're, they're dishonest. They're, they're scumbags. And this is why they come off like clowns. But see, you kind of have to pay attention to what's going on to realize what they're doing. If you're just watching this and flipping channels and, oh, I see this important looking guy, you know, looks like a, a confident attorney saying these things. And I see this pretty black woman who, who looks like, you know, my friend's mother. And, she, you know, they must be right about everything they're saying because the way they're delivering it. But you, you break down what they're saying and it falls apart because that's what it's all about for them. It's all about the optics. It, it's all about you looking at them and judging them visually and not thinking about what they're saying. That's what they want. That's why they're promoting all of these stereotypes in society. They don't want the truth. Out. They don't want people aware of the truth. I believe we have crashed craft uh, stated earlier. Do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my new station interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness like how would that be determined the specific documentation i would have to talk to you and skip about operation and a string of uh, uh, It happened during his weekly press conference. The 81-year-old Republican leader stood silent for more than 20 seconds before he was led away. McConnell's aide says that he felt lightheaded, and just a few minutes later, he was back on the podium. He told reporters he was, quote, fine. The last two clips you just saw, the one on the uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon or the UFO hearing, and this whole Mitch McConnell freezes thing, those both happened about a week later on July 26th, and those happened on the, the same day that Hunter Biden pled guilty to two federal tax misdemeanors. So the thing tying all these things together is the Hunter Biden situation. Specifically, as I said, on the 26th, um, he was supposed to plead guilty and get some kind of plea deal, but something happened. Hunter Biden's legal team denied Tuesday night, that would have been uh, July 25th, that they lied to court officials. After Representative Jason Smith's so-called amicus motion was filed on the public docket, a member of Hunter Biden's legal team called the court clerk and represented that she worked with Smith's attorney and requested the amicus materials be taken down, according to a lengthy order from the judge which was posted Tuesday afternoon. The judge, who said she consulted with the clerk's office to figure out what happened, said, it appears that the caller misrepresented her identity 
and who she worked for in an attempt to improperly convince the clerk's office to remove the amicus materials from the docket. So basically, Hunter Biden's people tried to pull a fast one and pretend they were the opposite team to get something removed that they didn't want the judge to see. And the judge caught them and told them, nope, I'm not going to accept the plea bargain now. And the purpose of Hunter Biden, you know, wanting this plea bargain was because it basically busts him for lower crimes and avoids the much larger crimes, which involve his father, the president. Okay, so this is a big, big deal. And people make jokes when there's a big deal. All of a sudden, you know, look up at the sky. It's a UFO. Okay, so I don't think it's a coincidence that um, the same day that that Hunter uh, was going to plead guilty and then decided to plead not guilty because the um, plea bargain was withdrawn because of the hanky pank of his own team. Uh, that's the same day that we get a UFO hearing, which was basically a nothing burger. There wasn't anything new revealed in that hearing uh, other than a, an official admitting on camera that they found a, a downed ship with, you know, non-human entities on it or whatever he you know, whatever words he used, biological, you know, materials. So I don't think it's a coincidence that that happened and this Mitch McConnell freezes thing. Now, if you read the article on this, um, I guess Mitch McConnell has a history of this. I mean, he's ancient. You know, the guy's decrepit. He, he shouldn't. Again, these people get in office and they stay in office uh, not because of far right people and far left people. I think it's people that are just evil and don't really care about either side. We just view them as extremes of their respective parties because we don't know what else sense to make of it. But, you know, again, this is what happens while our backs are turned and we're saying, I don't care about politics. They put these corpses in front of us and go, there you go. There's your man. Now, I just want to point out one more thing about this weird uh, Mitch McConnell freezing thing. Watch what happens here. Look, when you watch the whole clip, look at this lady, the lady that shows up and taps his arm. Watch this. It's so weird. After finishing the NDA uh, this week, it's been good bipartisan cooperation and a string of uh... Did you see that? She tapped his arm, and then that's when he stopped and started staring. Now, and these people all around, they're making these weird faces, like as if they know exactly what's going on. They're not surprised. They're not going, oh, what's the matter, Mitch McConnell? How can I help you? You know, they're not saying that. They're just kind of looking down like, okay, here he goes again. Or is this some kind of mind control tap where, okay, Mitch, when I tap you, you're gonna, your brain's going to freeze like it goes into a trance. Or another thing it could be is it's just literally an act to create a, just another uh, diversion story like the UFO story to, you know, just so the news has something to talk about that's extremely bizarre and get people looking in different directions so they're not focusing on the Hunter Biden thing. You know, I don't know. You decide what you think.